And it's interesting, is since this submission become at the ECOSOC status, they have moved a motion that the women in war religion must not be left behind. So, and she's going to tell us about the empowerment of women in religion. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers, my yeah, fathers, all right. my sisters, and uh, it's just a, a great pressure to be here this afternoon. As Dr. Ada has introduced me, thank you for that wonderful introduction. My name is Toyin Lawa. You can put a pastor before or behind. That's just mm -hmm. a, a title. I'm also, you know, a doctoral candidate. Uh, at Grand Canyon University, and I bear so much true story with my sister. It's really, really a life story. And I want to tell all of us this morning to thank you, most especially to bring yourself here. Because you are here, some shift has taken place in the status of women around the world. Because we are here to move that shift across globally. I want you to applaud yourself for doing that. Really that God has chosen this morning. When you look at creation, the most precious gift that God has given to humanity are women. That's, that's the most precious gift, women. He gave us out to be this empowerment for this season, for such a time like this. God has brought all of us together. With due respect to all men, including my own father, I respect all of you and I thank you for giving us that opportunity to be who God has created us to be. Looking at religion, what is religion? Religion is just serving one God, but he created us to serve each other, to be for each other. My talk this morning is just to encourage us in all those things that have been left behind for women to do. When you look at all the speeches that has been given this morning, we look at one important thing. Women is there in the house. Sorry, I'm not just always used to sit at the microphone. I like to, you know, just connect with us. He gave us that empowerment to go in out, to serve. And when you look at what is going on around the world, even in US, we are being divided in the religious way. But that is not the motion of God. We should all come together. Muslim Christians come together to look at what a woman can do. Shifting into the economic power, women have been counted as a second class citizen. When you look at positions, I don't know about your job, but some job they just put you right there. Inequality in salary, inequality in, uh, in all the things that are supposed to be given to us as women. But now this is the time to shift this curve. This is the time to bring transformation to the era of women. This is the time to be he for she. This is the time to gather our youngest. What do we want to see for those little girls that are coming up? This is the time for transformation. This is the time that we will be the role model for the whole world to see that we are women born out of a woman and that we can do it. And I believe, yes, we can do it. We can make the shift happen. When a woman is married, giving to her husband, you know, we marry and we are given away. I, I'm glad that you, you, you stop that. Look at all the things that happen at the young age. You work so hard to make the home beautiful. We are homemakers. We are the ones that do most of the things that do. But what happened when a woman died, a, a man died, and left the woman alone? And I'm giving this example of Africa. And the focus of what I am personally doing with our organization about women that are left as a widow. Because that, are one, that is one aspect of women that have been left behind. We, if we feel what they felt, they work together to make the home, and when the husband die, I don't know if it is only in Africa, you are out of the game already. The work that you build together, they will tell you it is time. Even if they allow you to take your scarf, you are lucky enough. If they allow you to take the water or the children that you have, you are lucky enough. If your husband and you build a house together, you are already out of that house. Because the following month, they will tell you, you no longer belong here. 
go to your father's house. In view of this fact, we need to look into what we women can do. This is not the time for us to sit. This is the time to move together in a movement of power. We move together to shift and walk on the street against whatever it is that is going on in America. But it is time now for us to move together, to say, yes, I'm taking one aspect of womanhood. I'm taking the young girls. Let's educate these young girls. I'm taking the widows. I'm taking those women that have been abused. I'm taking those women that are ostracized out of the society. I'm taking those women that are jobless. I'm taking those women to empower them in trade that they can do petty trading. You know, it's very rosy here in America, but when you look at what is going on, the level of poverty has increased so much. And all these things, the burden, the burden that a woman carry, the burden is too much. And when you look at our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ said, my yoke is easy, and he will lift up the burden of us. That is what we should do. We should not let religion divide us. In view of this fact, our organization do some need assessment in Africa. We went to one of the states in Nigeria especially. Look at the poverty level. Look at the health need of women. Look at the way women are suffering from cervical cancer. And there is no, 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 no money to even receive any treatment. So we took one aspect out and we took the widow. We did the need assessment. And the village where we went to is a period we couldn't show the... Or oh, are you able to show it maybe later on because of time? We took care, we made provision for 22 widows. But guess what? About 250 widows shows up. In fact, if you saw that, if, if, if we happen to view this movie and you, you saw them, you would be, I was in tears. Level of poverty. They disown them. They dislodge them. Their children cannot even be anything because they cannot even eat. When they get the money, they feed the children. So what do we do? This is one aspect of what my organization is doing currently. And I know in your mind where you are sitting right now, God has given you something to do for this group of women. You know, my own point of it is not only for us to gather here together, but what is the next step? What next move are we going to move for all those young girls in Ethiopia, in Africa, in Sudan, in Somalia? What are we going to do from here? I beg you this morning, please partner with each other. Partner with us so that we can move the force forward. This is just what I have for you this morning. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Pastor Toy. Thank you for that. Um, sorry we are cutting up because we want everyone who does the program to speak. You know, time runs so fast. You know, it's already to 2 p.m. And uh, 